All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we have G-Pack, the local Hammerfest ride. This is the start. Starts in a downhill, and uh, tonight, last night of the single loop. So good crew that had come out. The plan, again, has been to uh, not try to employ team tactics, get out there, make it a fun, hard ride. All good to chase your teammates. And here we are, kicking things off. This heads up to Reed Hooker Road. Nick Hagedorn from 901 was being pretty active. You can see him up front there, uh, taking a little little move off the front. Right in front of me is Boomer, a local legend, Boomer Leopold. And uh, I just moved myself up. The gap was getting a little too big. I decided to go to the front and pull this all back together and just go right over the top. And uh, I look back at this point after flicking the group through, and it was just myself and Boomer. So uh, really early on, odds of the group staying, or the uh, duo staying away, just not going to happen. My teammate Dale goes over the top, and uh, I decided to try to get a little flow going here. So you can see uh, here's Nick, who did the initial move, kind of set things off, and we got folks starting to roll through. Uh, but really, the spot things have really broken up have been this this intersection or just after this intersection we're at right now. So this is kind of the spot where more people are going to try to move up, more people are going to be active and alert. Uh, and Nick, Nick must have been eating his Wheaties. Uh, there he goes again. So you end up going into this little incline. If you watch the top left, a little icon, there's a percent grade here. But it's a little net uphill grind until you hit a little kicker. And you can see I'm putting out pretty decent power, but it wasn't enough for Scott Rollins. So he decides to take off. And right about where Scott, my teammate, is right now is where it, where it kicks up. And so at that point, as soon as it kicks up, I decide to put in just a bigger effort uh, and go across to uh, Scott and see what happened behind me. So it ends up uh, I went across by myself. Although, again, this is uh, still really early on. And uh, the pack... Lots of matches still in the matchbooks of people behind. So I knew the good, there was a good chance this wasn't staying away. And you can see me peeking back uh, really quick quite a bit. And Scott right here is going to he's gonna flick me through. You saw the old chicken wing there. But you can see, I paused this, bottom left, the group strung out, chasing behind. So uh, this is a spot where I'm like, okay, I'm going to play a little bit of a tactic. Um, there's no reason for me to pull back, back through. I'm going to make someone else come through, close it down to Scott. Uh, and Jack White, always willing to do work, decides to oblige. So now we're heading to the hard right or the right hand turn that goes to Fisherville Hill. That's where last week things separated. Um, and you know, good chance this is one of the you know, one of the longer hills on the course that things could uh, could happen again that way on this round. So usually I don't like to take the pull like I'm doing right here. So you can see my wattage is a little lower than what it normally would be if, uh, you know, if I was really trying to drive the pace at the front because I wanted to have the energy to put in a pretty big dig right here. I think the week before I did about 640, 650. Wasn't nearly as high uh, this week, but you can see still quite a bit of time over you know, 650, close to you know, 7. Um, but it drops down near the top. That was kind of the difference why the peak one minute wasn't quite as high. If you're looking at the shadows, always a good thing to do when you got the sun behind you. Look at the shadows. See who's behind you, how many. And uh, Jack, there he is. Uh, so at this point in time, there's just the two of us. And I make him kind of pull over the top and then down the hill. Um, right here, what I wanted to really kind of showcase is if you're trying to establish a break, you really have to push hard. And anytime there's an up, like downhills and uphills like this course has uh, through this section, when there's two, the advantage goes to the bigger group behind because they can carry more momentum on the downhills into the following uphills. So what I'm trying to do here is keep power up. You can see above, above 500. And then when there's a little bit of a downhill, I'm using that for some recovery so that I, I can smash that uphill again and try to keep the speed as high, speed as, high as possible. So here we are. We're joined by Hart Robinson there in the uh, orange and darker colored kit. And then Scott Rollins, my teammate, right in front. You see him peek back. He sees the groups coming, and he says, "Okay, we gotta we gotta ramp this pace a little bit more." And uh, he accelerates. So you can see my wattage. You know, I'm in the draft. We got a crosswind right now. Uh, power was pretty high. Uh, I end up going across to him, and again, going straight through. So if you're gonna try to keep the flow of a group together, especially since Scott and I are teammates. I wanted to make sure when I when I went back up to Scott that I went through. I wanted to show the guys uh, that were with us, Jack and Hart, that 
you know, we weren't going to be playing team tactics here. The, the goal here was to keep the pace high and establish the break. So if I'd have, you know, sat on Scott or if I'd have tacked over the top or if I'd have just let Scott roll, the cohesion would have gone out of this group and the odds of us staying away from the main pack just wouldn't, it just probably wouldn't have happened. They were still chasing pretty darn hard at this point. So uh, here we are, we take a right-hand turn, we start heading back home. This is more into a headwind now. And Rollins just gooses it. You can see from my power, I remember this at the time. You can't tell because I got the uh, stabilization going there. But I had to put a big, pretty big standing standing effort in to, uh, to stay with him. Um, here we are going over uh, 385, another little incline if you're watching that uh, gradient on the left there. And one thing I did semi-poorly here is there was... Too many times where I was caught taking a pull into the base of a climb, something I never like to do is to pull towards the base. Um, I would rather this, we're on an uphill. I like my pull to be after I've been in a draft, either on an uphill or as we've crested and are going on the downhill. Um, strategically, if you're on a group ride or in a race, one of the cardinal sins and, and biggest mistakes you can make is pulling hard into the base of a climb. So do your best to not do that if you can. Um, cause in general, the power just increases anyway. You know, I'm a bigger guy, uh, weigh like 190 ish pounds right now. Um, so I've got to put out quite a bit of power on any, any incline. So I know even if I'm in a draft, I'm having to push big power. So think about that. Um, here we are. That's down to the three of us now. So heart, heart had, uh, had fallen off at this point and we're about to head into Raleigh, the Grange Hill. Uh, you can see Rollins calling me up uh, so we could talk briefly about what the plan was. You never want the guy in front to see you uh, talking talking strategy, but um, he's essentially saying, hey, we gotta <laughs> we got to start doing uh, making a move here. And Scott was riding super well. Um, he, he was showing that he was super strong. Uh, it's very hard to get a draft behind him. Um, so I was more than happy to have uh, Jack being the one to pull into the base of the climb, kind of going off what I just said here. Um, having Jack put this this effort in, if you look at my wattage, 90, 100, back to coasting, um, 30 miles an hour. You can see Jack, he hasn't let up once here. So I'm getting this brief recovery of 20, you know, 20 seconds or so, and it's going to allow me to put this dig in uh, up the hill. Look at the incline, 4%. It should go up a little bit more than that. Um, at this point, I've created some separation to Jack. He's just uh, he's just had to put in work to, to get to the base of the climb after taking a pull already. And uh, I yell at Scott to, to hop on. Um, we are we are implementing some team tactics now. Um, I ended up actually getting a little gap, and Rollins, uh, Rollins sat on Jack briefly, if I remember correctly. And then he put in another dig, and Scott came across to me immediately to the front, and uh, we had separation on Jack's, and that was just a matter of uh, just pushing it all the way to the finish line. So uh, downhill sections, in general, um, in a two-man move like this, where I know my teammate's not going to try to attack me, it's time to start sort of thinking about where's the most advantageous spot for a person to pull based on their strengths. In general, it's going to be better for me to pull downhills and flatter sections, and for Rollins to pull more of the uh, more of the uphill sections. Um, so here we are, we're just exchanging pulls. There's nothing super, super crazy uh, after that Raleigh the Grand Hill we've already hit. Uh, I told Rollins I'm gonna lead him out. I wanted him to dig all the way to the end, largely because he was showing he was riding riding super strong. Um, and, and I also wanted him to get a good end of race style simulation push right here, which he did. And uh, then I had to make sure I stayed on it still so I didn't get caught from uh, Jack from behind. He's, he's resilient. Uh, you can never count Jack out. I decided to try to get a little footage of the end of everyone else. Uh, there we got Jack smiling as he crests the end. And here's the group behind roaring up the climb. We have got Hart Robinson, who was in the break with us, coming in for Fourth, followed by Brad Taylor, followed by Dwayne Accardo, followed by Pete Sully, Alex Wiseman, Derek Hosey, Luke Hooper, and the rest of the folks tapping it on out up. There's you go, Coach Dale. Coach Dale making it through. 
Uh, that is not a follow car that is coming. There is a car that is not a follow car. We have had a follow car on this before. Uh, but overall, really good, hard, fun ride. Uh, poor our Irish buddy here, Emmett, flat tire. Uh, but it was a great, great, uh, another great day of training. Uh, final stats here, as you can see, 338 average, 389 norm for the 28 minutes. Uh, peak one minute, 565. That was more like five or six something the day before, or the time before. Five minutes, 426. Six minutes, 403. Ten minutes, 383. If you haven't done GPAC yet, come on out. Join us. We would love to have you. That is all I got on this one.